know this is uh, we have uh, some time constraints, so I'll make this fast. I was supposed to run this thing. It's Peter Gonzalez. Everybody's familiar with Peter Gonzalez, so I'll skip the Peter Gonzalez. And of course, I have to mention the first AI mention of the talk, hopefully. And this is the logo of the project, USV. But I asked ChatGPT to make uh, logos inspired by Speedy Gonzalez, and you can vote which one you like on that link. <laughs> uh, that's my icebreaker. But now that I can go to the meat of the talk, a little history. Uh, we've been doing open data since 2010 in New York City, and then uh, in six years later, we got acquired by, uh, by OpenGov out in Silicon Valley. Uh, we've been doing open data since 2010, like I said, and we deployed a lot of portals across the US. And one persistent problem we always encounter is data quality, right? Regardless of whoever is producing the data. And for us, it's not a surprise, you know, this is uh, one article that always talks about the janitor work data scientists have to do, 50 to 80% is just cleaning and preparing the data, right? And there are so many challenges in how to do it. I don't need to tell you about the challenges. But what we're, the, the one problem that we always really encounter in the field is you know, when we help uh, people in the public sector maintain their data portals. Right? They don't have the same access to resources or training. You know, typically, they're appointed data custodians for that jurisdiction on top of their existing responsibilities. So you cannot expect them to learn all these specialized tools and learn R, learn all these other things. But anyway, in 2020, we decided to get the band back together, my co-founder and I. Um, we started that here, we left OpenGov, and we wanted to focus on building data infrastructure, mainly in the public sector. You know, these types of installations. Uh, part of our mission statement says we need to use open source and open standards, and I'm sure this crowd is familiar with this XKCD comic about the problem with maintaining open source and open standards, right? And of course, we, we, start, we decided to start our startup in 2020 when COVID was just happening, right? And uh, yeah, it was a match made in hell. Uh, despite that, we, we kept working on this data wrangler that will help democratize data wrangling so even regular people, people who are basically just familiar with Excel, will be able to use. And that's how we came up with, with QSV. And this speaks to my limited illustration skills. This is the best I can do. Uh, this was just a mashup of, uh, of uh, clip art. But actually, the, the origin of QSV was during that, that startup period when we started in 2020. You know, of course, nobody was, was ordering data portals. Our main customers were basically pub, the public sector, right? They were focused on something else. <laughs> you know, data portals is the last thing on their mind. So we did a pilot with a hedge fund to, to basically catalog all their data assets. And the problem with that was we were using a traditional data pipeline to extract all the metadata from their older data assets. The pilot failed, but out of that failure rose USV. And the, the reason it mainly failed was we had to crawl all their data assets on a nightly basis, extract all the metadata, and pump it into CCAN. And because of the large breadth of their data assets, by the time the, the crawler finished, it had to run again, you know, because the data was very dynamic. And, and CSV kit and Python pandas was not cutting it. So uh, out of that failure, we kept iterating on, on, on QSV, and it basically reached most of our goals. But the most important goal, and going back to the Speedy Gonzalez reference, is it's super fast. It's blazing fast. It's so fast, just to give you an idea how fast it is, we, 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 we have automated benchmarks. So we benchmark against this one million row sample of New York City's 311 data. It's about 520 megabytes. 
and I can, it can compile streaming statistics in 0.2 seconds. And if you can read down this list, it's quite fast. It's sub-second response times, right? That typically, it just runs circles around pandas. Uh, and this was great enough for what we were trying to do, even in that failed pilot. And you know, you can you can uh, you can look at the benchmarks if you, and you can even run the benchmarks yourself if you want to. So just to give you an idea, the stats it compiles. I, I don't know if you can read this. It compiles 32 summary statistics uh, apart from the standard max, min, standard deviation. You know, it does. Quartiles, interquartile range, null count, sparsity, uh, modes. It does all that in less than a second. And, and also, one of the things that we did is we made QSV uh, like an OLAP tool. So once again, our target audience are basically business analysts, you know, and, and, and bureaucrats who maintain data portals, right? So for them to maintain their data commitments to say, update the data portal once a month or once a quarter. Oftentimes they need to do some SQL queries to extract something that they can share with the public, right? So we, we embedded Polars. I don't know if your people are familiar with Polars. It's like the darling right now of the data science community in terms of speed. And, and this very complex query, it's very inefficient, right? This is like, aggregations on top of case, case statements, and it still answers this in less than a, a second. And how is it so fast? You know, it's written in Rust, and it has a Polars engine. And apart from that, it's multi-threaded, multi-IO, it does memory mapping, it has, uses all kinds of techniques to make sure it's as fast as possible. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm not claiming claim that I wrote all that. Basically, I just stood on the shoulders of all these giants and a very vibrant Russ and Polar's community and just leveraged what they, what they built. And, and why are we so obsessed with speed, right? Why is that the number one goal of the project? Because data is not getting any smaller, right? And we want to embed this speed into several systems. Right now, we embed it in our own projects, but we know of several other companies that have embedded it into their pipelines, and I know another open source project that's embedding it into their own open source project. Um, and just to give an idea, the, the, the great thing with Rust is it's, uh, it's compiled, it's not garbage collected. So even the, if you embed it, it's only 10 megabytes. Right, so, so the speed is also so you can do quick investigations, right? You can do what if type analysis, like what if I ask this query, what if I need to filter by this statement, it's fast, right? You, you can have instant answers. And what it also enables is it enables new workflows. Now that waiting for an answer is not a problem, now you can start thinking about things that you wouldn't think about before. Uh, that is preemptively inferencing metadata from a raw data set. That's one thing we do. Uh, another thing is compiling an extended data dictionary, right? Now that I have all the stats, I have the shape of the file, I can now tell something about the data set without downloading it. And of course, once again, leverage AI. Um, Here's one project that we maintain that we use in, with CCAN, Data Pusher Plus. I have a presentation about this two months ago if you really want to dive into the details, but the, the high level takeaway from this project was uh, as we were provisioning all these data portals in the US and we were pumping data into these data portals, it's often the data ingestion was a problem, right? So we basically wrote, embedded it into Data Pusher Plus, so it does the scanning of the data, and it will tell you ahead of time, okay, this data is, is corrupt, it's invalid. So you don't even wait for it to fail like 10 minutes later. Right? So that's one project where we embed it. It's also open source. Um, and we're starting to, I don't know if people are following the DCAT 3 standard, it's a metadata standard, uh, primarily for data catalogs. 
um, we're starting to incorporate that into Data Pusher Plus. So, okay, so our mission statement is to build standards-based best-of-breed open source solutions to make your data useful, usable, and use. I think for the two parts, useful and usable, we, we kind of have an answer already with Deep, Data Pusher Plus and QSV with, with our implementations, but the use part is still not an answered problem. So that's why we built this thing called QSV Pro. Because one thing we, we saw when we did our deployments was most of the people who were populating the data portals were not really data scientists or you know, the data uh, developers who are familiar with all this tooling that we're all familiar with, right? Oftentimes, they're just bureaucrats, and the extent of their knowledge is Excel, right? Excel and SQL. SQL, SQL, and Excel. So we said we need to have something that is Excel-like and, and allows you them to tap the power of QSV without knowing command line syntax. And that's what we built with QSV Pro. Uh, I, we also did a presentation about this uh, last month, so you can look into that. But the one thing I want to highlight is, as you can see, it's a GUI, right? It, you have a familiar grid interface, right? It has built-in integration into CCAN because that's where you do most of our deployments. And here's the, uh, the upload to CCAN workflow. Um, but this is something we, we, we are just releasing. This is what we're calling the uh, answering people interface. Um, so here, I don't know if you can see it. Since we have an OLAP engine that can answer SQL queries in, in, in seconds, if not less than a second, and, and we have all these summary statistics, like the shape of the data, right? We have it. In, and compute it in less than a second as well, even for large files. What we do now is we leverage that and we send a natural language query to an LLM using the statistics and the frequency tables and the data dictionary as context. And we ask the LLM, create a SQL query based on the description of this file. And the great thing about that is he'll create a query that either works or doesn't. Most of the time, it works surprisingly well. Actually, with, with, uh, with ChatGPT 4.0, it works surprisingly well. And this gets around the problem of hallucinations. Because now you have reproducibility because you're running a SQL query. You're not run, you know, hoping it gives you an answer based on some whatever magic it does. So this is something that we are releasing as well. That, and we hope this will, this will really democratize data wrangling at the desktop. So we have, you know, our, our data portals are more relevant and up to date. Uh, and also the good thing about this is when you do have a mistake, right, uh, they can always change, they can always, oh no, no, I lost myself. <laughs> they can always adjust it before they run the query. Right, so I think it's time for me. Five minutes? Okay. Yeah. Yep. So, yes, we are building solutions. It's mainly all open source, and we are embracing open standards because uh, actually one program that we have that we want to invite you in is uh, we were fortunate enough to, to get a grant from the National Science Foundation in the U.S. together with our partner, the University of Pittsburgh. They launched last year a program, Pathways to Open Source Ecosystems, and the, and the aim of that project is to harness the power of open source development for the creation of new technology solutions to the problems of national and societal importance. And fortunately, NSF decided to give us a planning grant last year, and I can't break any news right now, but I can say that this year we will go to the second Base of this program where we will engage the community to have a vibrant ecosystem, not just around CCAN project, which is where we're involved in, but, but with civic data in general. So we hope uh, you'll join us. Once that is phase two is launched, we'll make a big announcement, I'm sure. And uh, yeah, we hope to uh, co-create and build data infrastructure based on open source and open standards with you all. Thank you.
three minutes for questions. Do you have any questions? I do. Okay. Um, this is really specific, but just from your, your last slide about the new project with the University of Pittsburgh, is that connected to the civic data switchboard project? Uh, actually, it's one of the. Yeah. The question was if the project was related to the Civic Data Switchboard project, also out of University of Pittsburgh. And actually it is. One of the co-principal investigators of the Civic Switchboard project, which for this audience is basically how to use uh, library science to help uh, classify and organize open data. And we're, we act, actually, the principal investigator of that, uh, Eleanor, Nora, is also a principal, co-principal investigator of this project as well. Yeah.